Hey guys, I'm the math professor. Today we're talking all things asymptotes. All right, so first off, I were to give you a 15 second definition of what an asymptote is. It is gonna be a line that a curve, like these red ones here, approach, but never ever cross, okay? We can have horizontal, slant, vertical asymptotes. Let's talk about some more of them. All right, looking at this example that I had on the board earlier, this is a vertical asymptote. It goes up and down. The definition of a vertical asymptote is gonna be the zeros of our denominator. So since we have numerators and denominators, that means we're probably gonna have rational expressions like you see over here in examples one and two. In fact, this top one is going to be what the graph of our picture over here looks like. One over x minus one. If I look at the denominator, right, we're trying to find the zeros of our denominator, the bottom of a fraction. If I look at the denominator, I'm gonna solve for it. I mean, I have to set it equal to zero. So if I say x minus one equals zero now, and of course move the one over by adding it, I get x equals one. And if I were to call this zero and this one, two, and so on, at x equals one, that line right there, that is the vertical asymptote that you see in this graph. All right, let's do another one. What about number two? We won't graph it, but let's look at our denominator, which is x squared minus nine. If I set that equal to zero and solve for this, now I have x squared, if I add the nine over, equals nine. Take the square root of both sides. And of course, when we take the square root of something, we get a plus or minus. So I get x equals plus or minus three, which means that 2x squared over x squared minus nine would have two vertical asymptotes at positive three and negative three. All right, those are vertical asymptotes. Let's check out some horizontal asymptotes. All right, so unlike vertical asymptotes that just have the zeros of our denominator, that's gonna be your vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptotes have three cases, all right? And it all depends on the degree of your top or your numerator and your bottom which is the denominator. Okay, in the first one, let's say that they're equal degrees, meaning that this is an x squared and the bottom is also an x squared. That's our largest exponents. That's what a degree is on the top and the bottom. If they're the same, so if they are equal here, two and two, what we're gonna do is look at the coefficient, the leading coefficient for each the top and the bottom. We're going to divide that and see what we get. So here the leading coefficient is two. The bottom, if there's no number, remember that's a one. So two divided by one is just two. Now that number can become fractions and other things depend on what the top and the bottom leading coefficient is. So you might have a fraction there. All right, this one, two over one is just two. Another case, the second one, is if the smaller degree is on the top, right, in the numerator. So here, this is f, it's just x, it's like x to the first power. Well, one, of course, is smaller than a two. When this happens, you're gonna have just the line y equals zero as your horizontal asymptote. So if you think on a graph, if this is x and this is y, at y equals zero, it's not positive or negative, it's just gonna be right along like this, and that is gonna be our horizontal asymptote if the smaller degree is on top. That leaves our last case if the smaller degree is on the bottom. So again, here the three is a lot bigger than this one. If this happens, there's gonna be no horizontal asymptotes, all right? So I'm gonna say no horizontal asymptote. However, if the bigger one is on top, then we do have to look for what's called a slant asymptote, which we'll talk about next. All right, so again, slant asymptotes only happen um, when our degree of our numerator is larger than the denominator, all right? And again, what that typically looks like is it's going to be slanted. It's neither vertical nor horizontal, but it's kind of off to the side. And you can always write this, since it's a line, in the form y equals mx plus b, okay? So because of that, we have to check for slant asymptotes. They're not always gonna happen, uh, but when they do, they'll be linear like this. All right, let's see how to check for that. Here's that last example I had on the previous um, problems. It says x to the third plus x over x plus one, All right? Now we have to use what's called synthetic division. If you don't know what that is, I'll put a video up here for you that you can watch how to do that. However, what we're gonna do, since we have to divide this, is we're gonna take uh, and set this equal to zero. So I'm gonna divide by a negative one and we use kind of an upside down compared to our third grade division type symbol. Um, and here, if I have an x to the third plus x, this is gonna be a one. I'm missing my squared term, a one again, and then I'm also missing my constant, so another zero. All right, now when I synthetically divide this, I have to bring down the one, All right? One times negative one is negative one. Zero plus negative one is negative one. Negative one, negative one times negative one is positive one. One plus one is two. 
And then two times negative one is a negative two. And of course, zero plus negative two is a negative two. Now, one of the weirdest math concepts I think happens with slant asymptotes when you synthetically divide, you don't use the remainder. It just goes away, all right? But you do use everything that's to the left of that. So again, this is my constant term, my x, and this would be my quadratic term or my, um, my squared. So here I'd have x squared or one x squared minus x plus two. Now, because this is not written in the form y equals mx plus b, it's not linear, it's not a line, this does not have a slant asymptote, even though our numerator had a larger degree than our denominator, all right? Let's check one I think that does work, and that's number two over here. It says x squared plus four x plus four over x minus one. So again, if I set the bottom equal to zero, I'm gonna be dividing by positive one this time. And I have all the terms squared, one, zero. And so this would be a one, a four, and a four. If I bring those down, let's see, we got a one times one is a positive one. Four plus one is five, and then five times one is five here with a nine. Again, the nine, we are not gonna use that because it's our remainder. So I'm just gonna use my constant and my x. So this would be x plus five, positive five. And this right here, if I think of it as y equals x plus five, that line, right, it's written in the form y equals mx plus b, this line would be the slant asymptote that this problem has. All right, so now we know vertical, horizontal, and slant asymptotes. Let's graph a few of these and see if we can try them. All right, we're gonna try to graph a few of these. I have three examples up here in front of me. This first one says negative two over x squared plus two. All right, so I wanna first check for vertical asymptotes, which remember, that means I have to set the denominator equal to zero. So here if I say x squared plus two equals zero, subtract two on both sides, and I get x squared equals negative two. When I take the square root of that though, I get x equals plus or minus the square root of negative two. That's gonna be an imaginary number. All right, so because of that, since all my x's are real, it's the real number line, I can't have an imaginary asymptote. So there are no vertical asymptotes, right? We cannot have a, an i root two, that, that's not possible, right? Then I have to think my horizontal asymptotes. So looking at this, this is the case where the bottom has the larger degree which if you remember, that means that we're gonna have the line y equals zero as our horizontal asymptote. So I like to uh, indicate asymptotes with a dotted line like this. Okay, you can put arrows on it if you want to, but anyway, then what we need to figure out is um, where or what side of this is it gonna be on? And to test, you might wanna choose points that are close to zero. So if I plug in, for example, maybe like a negative one, a zero and a one, what happens here? Well, since it's squared, the one and negative one should do the same thing. And that would give me negative two over, negative one squared is one plus two is three. So negative two thirds, that's a little bit less than zero. And what about zero itself? If I plug in zero for x, that cancels, giving us negative two over two. Negative two over two is a negative one. So to me, it looks like this is a little bit lower. And since this is an asymptote, I really don't have to do too much more. I know it's gonna get really close to that line, but never cross it. So it's gonna come and dip down there for a second and then get really close to zero again, with the line y equals zero, but never cross it. All right, so that's the graph of that line. Not too exciting, but that's what it looked like. All right, number two, this one, when I set the denominator equal to zero, we have x squared minus nine equals zero. Add the nine to both sides, x squared equals nine, and the square root of nine, of course, is plus or minus three. Okay, so like we said earlier, when we have a vertical asymptote um, at plus or minus three, we're gonna go back, one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, and these are gonna be vertical lines, all right? So we'll have two of them, one and two, which means this is kind of cut up into one, two, three different regions. Now, it is possible to have both vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So, if I erase this and look at the horizontal ones now, horizontal, this is a case where my degrees are the same, right? We have x squared on top, x squared on the bottom. If you remember what happens when they're the same, we're gonna take the coefficients, the leading coefficient of the top, which is two, over the bottom, which is a one, and of course, two over one is just two, and this is the line y equals two. So up at two on our y-axis, we're gonna have 
an asymptote that looks like this. So now those three regions have been divided once more. So now we have six, right? A top and the bottom on the left, in the middle, and on the right. So what we need to think about is this graph is probably either gonna be either above or below this line on the left side, above or below it in the middle, and above or below it on the right. To, to figure out where it is, we're gonna use test points, all right? The easiest one is probably zero. If I put in the test point of zero, okay, into my graph, this is for the X's, let's see what happens here. We're gonna have to test both the left, middle, and right region. So if I put in zero, on top we get just zero, and on the bottom zero minus nine is just negative nine. So anything zero divided by any number is of course zero. That means that zero, zero, the output is zero here, is gonna be um, included on this graph. Now, because these are asymptotes, all right, I can't just go up here. I'm gonna get stuck by this one. So what I have to do instead is it's gonna definitely go down. It's gonna go down such a way where it gets really close to this left side and really close to this right side. There's nothing else because of those asymptotes for this graph to do, all right? That's what asymptotes are. They get really, the curve gets really close to them, but it never quite touches those, okay? Let's use a test point over on this left side. What about negative four, right? I think this was negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So since my asymptote is at negative three, if I go back one more, I can maybe plug that in. If I plug in a negative four here, negative four squared is positive 16. So two times 16 on the top, which is 32, over uh, four squared again is 16, 16 minus nine is seven. And what is 32 divided by seven? Well, 35 divided by seven is uh, five. So 32 divided by seven is gonna be a little bit less than that, four point something, okay? You don't have to be too particular here. You just have to kind of figure out, are you above or below this horizontal asymptote. So since this was up at two, and this is a little bit bigger than four, all right, I'm gonna be up, let's see, two, three, four, five, and be between those right around there. Now, just like this had kind of parameters as to what it could do, so can this, right? All it can really do is get closer to this one as it goes down and closer to that one as it goes up, right? It cannot pass those lines that's kind of bounded by those different asymptotes. All right, now typically they mirror each other. So over here, we'd probably see the same thing. Let's just see if that would make sense in this case or would it be down here in this other region? Well, if that was a negative four and both these are squared, a positive four, if they're both squared, also gonna turn those positive, right? Four squared is also 16 times two gives us 32. And same thing on the bottom, 16 minus nine is still seven. Okay, so because of that, I'm also gonna be up here at four and a half or thereabouts, and it's gonna be bounded identically on the other side. So this is the graph of 2x squared over x squared minus nine. All right, let's try the third and final one here. It says x squared minus four x plus four over x minus one. Again, tr uh, looking at my vertical asymptotes, if I set the bottom equal to zero, the denominator, that's gonna uh, add the one over to the other side, we get x equals one for our vertical. Okay, so over here at one, Draw a dotted line vertically. That's gonna be our vertical asymptote. And then let's check for horizontal. So let's see, this is a case where our numerator, our top one has a larger degree than our denominator. So that means that there's gonna be no um, horizontal asymptote, but we do have to check for a slant asymptote. Okay, to do that, again, we use synthetic division. So I'd be dividing by one, since that's what we just set it equal to. And on top, I'm not missing any terms, so I can just do a one, negative four, and four. I think this one's slightly different than that other one we did. Let's see, bring down a one. One times one is one. Negative four plus one is negative three. And negative three times one is negative three, plus four is a one. But we do not use the remainder. So our slant asymptote, we do have one. It's actually just going to be x minus three, or you could think of the line y equals x minus three. And remember how to graph lines start at negative three on your y-axis. Put a dot there. The slope would be just one here, so I go up one over one. And if I draw a dotted line through those two points, I didn't do very good. Then we're going to have four regions where this could potentially be. Here, 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 or here. 
Again, we can use test points. Um, the easiest one is probably zero. I always like to use zero because it's nice. Uh, if I put in the top here, this will become zero. That would become zero and I'd be left with a four. And on the bottom, zero minus one is a negative one. So at zero, I'm up at, or I'm sorry, down at negative four. So this was negative three, so negative four would be down one more. So it would look like this. Now again, since these are asymptotes, they are bounding these regions. All of this can do is get closer to that one and closer to this one. That's the only thing that this graph can do. Okay, we have to check our other regions. So again, it's gonna be on that side of our line. Um, let's see here, if this was one, let's try two. What would two do if I plug it in for X? Well, two squared is four minus four times two is eight plus four. This would be, well, let's do the bottom first. Two minus one is of course uh, one. So I just have to worry about the top there. Four minus eight is a negative four. Negative four plus four is zero. So we get zero over one. Again, it's gonna be zero. And that means at two, which if this is one, then two would be probably here. It's gonna look something like this, kind of mirrors its opposite side. Okay, graphing these can be a little tough. Just use test points on either side or maybe multiple sides of your vertical asymptotes. Plug those in for X. What it spits out will be your Y values and that's how you graph those things, okay? Hey guys, hopefully this video on asymptotes helped you out. If it did, please hit the like button. That helps me out. And until next time, keep doing your math homework fast and accurately.